Hey guys, Matthew here. In this video, we're going to look at object properties and layers. So, if I have nothing in my file, you notice that on the very, very right end of my screen, there's a properties uh, tab here. So, if I drag that out, we should get the full word. There we go. It says properties, and it's got this little rainbow circle here. You notice that by default, it says viewport and some stuff, camera and some stuff, target and some stuff, wallpaper and some stuff. Now, these are the properties of the viewport. So if I rotate that view around, you'll notice that the position of the camera changes. And in top view, I pan, the position of the camera changes. So these are the properties of these viewports. Now if I have an object, so I'm going to type box, because that's the only command we know at the moment. I'm going to start it at 0, 0, 0, and I'm going to make it 10 units by 10 units by 10 units. And I click on it this will change. We now have an object selected instead of a viewport which is of type closed extrusion. We'll get into that kind of stuff further in the geometry section. Uh, we, it doesn't have a name. We could name it if we like. We'll call it my cube. Now if I unselect it by clicking somewhere else and select it again, it'll be called my cube. It's on the default layer and we can change its layer here. So now it's on layer 1 and in this instance it becomes red because layer 1 is red and its display color is by layer so it could give it a different color to be displayed without changing its layer we'll get into that in a bit uh, line type, print color, print width we'll get into a bit, hyperlink we'll probably never get into I've never seen that used meaningfully and there's some more stuff here that we don't really need to get into if we click on details you'll notice for a moment that there's all of this stuff here. This is everything that Rhino needs to know about the object. So it knows what layer it's on, it knows the object's name, it knows how to render it, it knows what kind of geometry it is. All of this stuff is fundamental. Um, this ID here is important as well. You won't get into it here, but if you begin to get into computer programming for Rhino, understanding that this is important is of some sort of value. But anyway, so we have a cube and we can check its properties here by looking at it. Now, there's another tab here called layers, which has a whole bunch of layers here, right? So we've got a default layer, layer one, layer two, layer three, layer four, layer five. So if I make another box, and this one I'm gonna start at 10 in the X, zero in the Y, zero in the Z. And I'm gonna make it 10 by 10 by 10. I have two boxes right next to each other. Now I can select one and I can add it to one of these other layers very simply by right clicking on the layer and clicking on change object layer. So I've got an object selected and I'm changing the object's layer by clicking on that. So now I've got one object on the red layer and one object on the default layer. You notice that layer 1 to 5 has a light globe and a lock on it while lay the layer default does not. So if I click on another layer, say in this instance layer 5, now it has a tick on it. Sorry, if I double click, it has a tick on it. And default has lost its tick. I now have the capacity to turn this light globe off, which turns that layer off. Now I can no longer see it. And if I click on it again, it reappears. The object is still there, it's just being hidden. And I can do the exact same thing to layer 1. I can also click this padlock here to lock the ob to lock the layer, which means all the objects on that layer are locked. So I cannot click on objects on that layer, but I can click on objects on layer 1. And if I lock that as well, I can no longer select objects on layer 1 either. If I want to change the color of a layer, I can just click on the square which has the color. I can either choose a color from all of these options here on the left hand side. So I could choose green if I wanted to. Press OK and now the layer becomes green. I can also click on that and choose a color using this color picker. And now I've got this weird car key color. Great. So that's how you use layers. So the most important thing to remember is I can select objects if they're unlocked. I can select objects and then I can right click on the layer I want to add them to and choose change object layer. 
I can also change the name of the layer. So I can write my cube purple on the purple layer by just clicking on the text and it will allow me to edit that. So I can edit the text, I can turn the layer on and off, I can lock the layer and I can change the layer's color by clicking on any of these colors here or choosing a color on the color picker. And that's how you use layers and read the properties in Rhino. Uh, see you in the next video.